Welcome to It Came From A Box, this is Sergio AM, and on this first episode of Hauled PS5 Edition, we're taking a look at all five official accessories for, well, for, you know, the PlayStation 5. And at the end, we're giving away two of them, so stick around. <laughs> One of the first pickups to consider for the PS5 is a second controller for multiplayer or to just swap it out when one of them dies. And this gen, Sony really knocked it out of the park with their DualSense wireless controller. At first glance, it looks like a piece of alien technology with this slick futuristic design where it's almost like the controller is black underneath and shielded by these white plates throughout. Speaking of that white, uh, it's actually more of a pearl, a little grayer than expected which should keep it looking clean and hopefully prevent it from yellowing out with time. Like any good controller, when you first wrap your hands around it, uh, it just feels right. The handles are what I call gently curvaceous, and they're long enough to wrap all your fingers around. Every button is easy to access, and it has a nice weight to it which not everyone's gonna like. To match this new look, we now have glossy monochromatic face buttons and D-pad, both which are very responsive and have a nice and short travel distance. Then we have the same buttery smooth, grippy, and symmetrical analog sticks. In between, there's the integrated speaker and PS button. Under that, the headset jack and charging contacts. Back up here, the large, smooth, and clicky touchpad surrounded by the repositioned light bar. At the top, we now have a USB-C port for charging, and inside we have both an accelerometer and gyroscope for motion controls. Now let's talk a few details. In the center here, we now have an integrated microphone, which although is not the best quality, it sounds like you're talking through a phone. Yeah, this game is actually really fun to just like hang out in. But it makes it so more people can access voice chat, which is great for multiplayer. Aside from that, it can also record you right before you score a trophy, which is an awesome way to save those rare moments. <laughs> Next, instead of rumble motors, here we have dual actuators that are way more accurate to deliver very precise vibrations. Then we have these new amazing adaptive triggers that use gears and levers to completely change how they feel by providing interactive feedback in the form of tension and resistance. A good example is when using a bow in Astro's Playhouse where you can feel it tighten as the trigger's resistance increases. It'll blow you away the first time you try it, but if you're not a fan, don't worry, you do have the option to adjust or turn off the feature. Now all that can affect battery life. The DualSense has a 1560 milliamp battery that in our testing lasted about 10 to 12 hours with older games that don't really use those features, but much less when they do, such as with Astro's Playhouse where we average about 4 to 6 hours. One way to help with that is by adjusting the controller settings to either lower or turn off those features, but keep in mind that you can also just use it while charging. Overall, there's a lot of attention to detail here. Uh, from the design to the tech, but also with the little things such as the texture on the grips that are made up of tiny micro PlayStation icons throughout. So yes, this is a great controller and it's awesome to see Sony try something different that still feels familiar. It's exactly what I expect from next gen. One of the easiest and most convenient ways to keep the PS5 controller topped off, especially if you have a second, is with those contacts via a charger. This is the DualSense charging station. It shares the same design as the console with these wavy panels on the sides, that fingerprint magnet glossy plastic in the middle, and textured micro PlayStation icons along the inside. At the bottom, we have strips of rubber on each side to keep it in place, and back here is where you connect that angled AC cable to power it. Way it works is that this piece drops down which reveals a nub that goes into the headset jack and pins for charging. Now because there's nothing to guide the controller in, it's going to be a bit tricky to figure out at first. You want to keep it centered and you'll know you got it right when the mic LED disappears and the controller glows orange once around the touchpad. In here, they don't lock into place, they're actually a bit wobbly so you want to be careful with it, but that's so you can easily remove them. 
As for how fast they charge, uh, on empty, it should take roughly about three hours to fully charge the DualSense controller. So there it is, pretty straightforward, and I have to say, there's something so satisfying about dropping in the controller when you're done playing and picking it right back up to continue. Also, it complements the console so well, so much so that it, it sort of looks like a mini PS5. Very cute. Games aside, if you're planning to watch a lot of YouTube, Netflix, or any other type of media on the PS5, you can of course navigate around with the DualSense controller, but if you want something a bit more convenient, there's the dedicated media remote. Before you do, quick PSA, check if your TV has CEC functionality, because if so, your TV remote may already work with the PS5, and uh, you know, it's just one less controller to have around. Back to this one. First thing, it's small, at just under 6 inches, and like the console, it's got this slick, organic look with curves all throughout. You've got textured plastic at the bottom, yes with those same PlayStation icons that the eye can't see. And in the center, we have that glossy plastic that's actually functional by hiding the IR reader at the front, and the latch at the bottom to access the battery compartment. Yeah, sadly it's not rechargeable, it runs off of two double A's, but these should last a very long time. So quick look at the layout, we have volume control, TV power, a mic button that's currently disabled and reserved for future use, but you can use the microphone if you navigate to a search bar and hit the mic icon, then an LED will pop up to indicate that it's listening. Next we have navigation and options, playback, and dedicated app buttons, which I'm sure I'll randomly hit in the middle of a movie. Dang it! Finally, down here we have the same PlayStation button as on the DualSense. Hold it to go home, or press it to access the control center overlay with all your favorite settings and cards. Now in use, it's pretty straightforward. When you wake the console with the media remote, it'll automatically take you to the media tab, which is a very nice touch, and puts you right where you need to be. In hand, it feels good and the buttons work just fine, but they're all flat except for navigation, the PS button, and we have tactile dots on volume up and play pause. I bring that up because these are sadly not illuminated, so when you're watching a movie in the dark, all you'll have to go by are those that stick out. And yeah, that's it. It's just a stylish and simple way to wake up your PS5, navigate the UI, and quickly access playback controls. Being that Sony makes some very high quality headphones, it just makes sense for them to tackle the headset for the PS5. This is the Pulse 3D. Coming in at $100, it's sort of a budget wireless headset with a focus on 3D audio, hence the name. It comes with a USB-A to USB-C cable to charge it, a 3.5 millimeter jack audio cable to use it with other devices such as your phone or PlayStation VR, and a dedicated 2.4 GHz wireless USB adapter that hooks into the console. As for looks, uh, it has a fluid design that wraps around the cups, very unique but not as exciting as say the DualSense controller. As for quality, the white band does feel durable, but I can't say the same for the plastic on the ear pads and buttons. Quick look around, this outer band is very solid yet flexible with rubber underneath that's textured in those PlayStation icons. Then we have this inner headband that slides up to fit your head. The foam in the ear cushions is soft but sturdy, wrapped in this kind of not so durable pleather material. And they're also set in place so you can't rotate or adjust these. Now on the left ear pad we have easy access controls. That being a power switch with a status indicator LED off the side, the 3.5 millimeter audio jack to use it with other devices, a USB-C port to charge it, a mute button, a volume rocker with an indent so it's easy to find, a monitor switch so you can hear yourself, and another rocker so you can balance the sound between either voice chat or your game. On here, we also have two hidden microphones. Speaking of which, uh, at this price, the mic sounds just okay. Oh, that's my mom. My mom's watching. Hi, mom. <laughs> it lacks clarity. It sounds filtered and lo-fi, almost like talking out of a phone, but should be good enough for voice chat, and it's a nice feature to throw in. Now, as someone with glasses, a big head, and large floppy ears, uh, it's actually pretty comfortable. My ears easily fit in there, the headset is lightweight, there's just enough pressure on the sides, and the headband keeps it in the right position. 
So far, the most I've worn it is about four to five hours with no discomfort or pinching, uh, which says a lot. As for battery, uh, it's rated to last 12 hours. With normal use, we've only had to charge them every other day or so, and yes, you can use them while charging. Now, the quality of the sound is not worth it for music and movies alone, because in that category, it's flat and lacks volume. But it truly shines for games with 3D audio, which it's tuned specifically for. Quality-wise, it sounds best at higher volumes. It comes in pretty clear and bright with explosive highs, but it does feel a bit hollow within these ear pads. As for the experience, environmental sounds make it so you want to walk instead of run to take in everything around you, but that calm is then abruptly shattered in combat with those explosive highs. It's very engulfing, dynamic, and it adds tension to the gameplay, which pairs perfectly with those adaptive triggers. So for 100 bucks, the Pulse 3D is a solid headset that integrates really well with both the PS5's 3D audio and the DualSense adaptive triggers. One of my favorite PS5 features is its broadcasting capabilities, where at any time you can just start streaming your game to either Twitch or YouTube, and if you're looking to enhance that experience, one way is with their HD camera. As for looks, it has the same futuristic vibe as the PS5, and it's also adorable with these two lenses on the front giving it this kind of face. Waka 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 waka. The camera is attached to the top of this clamp and can be slightly rotated up and down. Tucked in here, we have an LED to indicate when it's on. As for the stand, it opens pretty wide, stays in whatever angle you put it in, and it has rubber at the bottom to help keep it from moving around. Now, you can use it closed on either a flat surface or hang it on the edge of your TV with this lip under the camera. Once hooked up, you then have the option to adjust it in the camera settings, which is a bit tricky. You gotta make sure the room is brightly lit and that you're far enough for it to pick up on your face. Then you have the broadcast camera settings with options to change all sorts of things like the camera size, clipping mask shapes, a chroma key if you're using a blue or green screen, a handful of cheesy effects, as well as brightness, contrast, and transparency. Now, the quality is not that good. Even after adjusting the settings, the colors aren't that vibrant, and it's grainy. You definitely need really good lighting, and we'd suggest using the smallest size to hide those imperfections. That says a lot. It would have been awesome if they just bumped up the price to the $100 range with better quality and maybe even a microphone because this and the PS camera are currently the only options for the PS5. There's no third party support. So if you wanna stream your game along with your face, I'm gonna be honest, you're probably better off saving for a capture card and a better quality webcam. So that's five accessories for the PlayStation 5. Coincidence? I, I think not. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and we'd love to have you subscribe and ding the bell to stay notified because on the next episode of this series, we're checking out PS5 headsets, skins, hard drives, anything else we can find, and that's just the beginning. Now, because we're in a festive mood, the holidays are here, two of you will get to pick one of any accessory featured in this video. All you gotta do is comment below and tell us which accessory on this list is your favorite and why, along with the hashtag, it's not white, it's pearl white. Then, right as the new year starts on midnight, we'll announce the winners on Twitter. Finally, this content is brought to you by, well, you guys. So if you're looking to pick up anything featured in this video and wanna support us at the same time, please check out the affiliate links down in the description below. Oh, also, showcase some love and subscribe to our vlog it came from a vlog. Get it? Once again, this is Sergio AM, and I'll see you for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out, so please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio AM, and I'll see you for the next box.